planning and preparation, you can, um, uh, there's some much cheaper options. So, you know, I guess for the last race, we needed to have a trisel. I bought a trisel from somebody in Sydney for 350 bucks. Um, I don't think it had ever been used. It had, the sail bag had four other boat numbers and names on it. Um, but, you know, hey, for, you know it, it met the requirements. But so, all I would say again, before you rush out and start buying new, you know, you can hire a satellite phone for ten dollars a day or twelve dollars a day, so you don't necessarily need to buy this stuff. Uh, look, the other couple of things which are uh, down the bottom here is uh, really important. You need to have um, Australian registration um, because uh, in order to be able to go overseas, um, that can be quite a lengthy process. They are very meticulous about the paperwork they need. Um, I would suggest you want to allow at least a couple of months. Um, so in my case, I sent the stuff off. I came back, I sent some more stuff. I sent it back. It took, took me three goes to uh, actually get them the detail that they wanted. So just plan that in advance. Uh, and the other thing is insurance. Um, not so much getting insurance, but the insurance company will have particular requirements. So almost guaranteed the insurance company will will require a rig inspection, and once you get your rig inspected, then there's a fair chance they're going to find something and <coughs> need, to get, need to get that fixed. Or you may, in, you know, if your rigging is more than 10 years old, you most likely have to replace your standing rigging to get insurance. And that, that's not particular for Bali, that's to go to, to Rottnest. Uh, but again, you need to plan this because there's only a limited resource here in WA for doing rigging work, and um, these guys get booked up very quickly. Um, just then back on stability, just a bit of an update. Um, on the rally boats, um, we have an agreement with the um, RORC, the Royal Ocean Racing Club, to, for them to calculate some um, triple S numbers, some safety and stability, or seaworthiness and stability screening numbers. Uh, we've got six boats who've already said they want to do that, and they've given the data, and we've sent that off to RORC, and we're just waiting on the results. Um, it's only going to cost about $120 a boat, so um, anybody who's a race boat here will think this is just an unbelievable bargain, because that's going to cost thousands. Um, but if there's any other boat which um, thinks they, you know, that it's not the only way to satisfy stability, normally it's, um, there's other means, but if you can't satisfy those other means, this option is available. But please get onto it straight away, let me know. Bill, we Uh, every boat needs to pass stability, whether it's race or rally. Uh, no, if you've got uh, most boats, most modern boats will have an ISO design category A, and that will that's fine for the rally. Okay. Email a couple of people have perhaps come times on that way for a reply. Okay. Well, have a chat with me afterwards, and we'll um, yeah. And the other ruling, which is interesting, you talk about a trisail. The Cat Two is. Has a both both way really when it comes to a tri sail as to whether you need one within fairly mass. Uh, no, look, I'm saying, you, I, look, I don't know about in mass furling, but yeah. certainly it's, it's now the tri is no longer a requirement. If you can, right. if you can reef the, the sail to 50%, I think it is, um, then no tri sail is required. So you accept that one. Yep. Um, on the race boats, um, race is a bit harder. Um, we have to incline test boat and they will only accept the actual boat so sister ship isn't good enough. Uh, we've done seven boats so far uh, and I think we've just about got it down to about two hours of boat now uh, as long as it's calm weather um, and again we can do other boats but uh, we need notice. Uh, this is one of the boats um, we were at their uh, inclining test it's uh, not as dramatic as you think. It's just a couple of poles out each side to tip the boat, I think, three degrees or four degrees uh, each way. So fairly simple. There is another way of doing inclining tests. This is the French way of doing it. So. <laughs> but we don't need to do that. <laughs> um, I've got another photograph of one of the boats upside down. That was another part of... Uh, but anyway, that's, um, so yeah, anyway, inclining tests, uh, look, seven boats done. I think the other boats have already done it, so uh, we're in pretty good shape. But again, if another boat wants to do it or needs to do it, uh, we have to give
get the equipment from the East Coast and logistics just take a little time to, uh, to set up. <coughs> so moving on then uh, to uh, what happens when we, uh, we get to Bali, um, which is the marina, and this is probably our number one priority at the moment to get this sorted out. So uh, in the past we've gone to the um, old marina, which is this item over there, and if you actually, um, it's, you know, that's what we've used in previous events. Um, you know, good news, it's got a bar and a cafe ashore, ashore but the bad news, it's in really bad condition, and uh, part of that marina has actually broken off, and um, you can, that's it in there. That's part of the, part of the old one. So that's, uh, anyway, look, that's, that's very much plan B, um, plan A, is to go into the um, new marina, which is this area down there. Um, again, you know, with it, as with everything you uh, mentioned, there's good news and bad news. The good news is, as you can see, they've already dug out the basin. Um, the main jetties are already in place. Uh, the piles are in place, uh, but they haven't quite finished it yet. So um, there's finger jetties due to go in. Um, and they are promised to be uh, finished in December. Um, but so, so I think it's a margin. Uh, they may or may not be there by the time we arrive, but um, it doesn't matter. We can moor stern to, to the jetty. We can use the piles which are there to uh, tie the bow out. And so uh, plan A is to get ourselves into, the, um, into this uh, new marina. Um, last thing is, um, and in order to try to secure this, we're, we're trying to negotiate a memorandum of understanding with uh, Palindo, who are the state company that runs the port of, um, of Benoa, Aswan, and a number of other ports. And um, we're hoping that not only will they provide us with marina service, but they will act as our agent for helping boats clear in and uh, clear out of uh, Indonesia. So, yeah, I'm hoping that. Uh, at worst, the facilities will be no worse than the previous Bali uh, events, but um, given that this, um, this berth is already, uh, the new marine is already dug out and uh, the basics are, are there, I'm sure, it, I believe it will be better than on the uh, previous events. Happy to take any questions on what I've just presented. Bill, um, just, just a question, um, as a rally boat on the Cat 2 safety requirements, will the club be offering or making available auditors to audit against that, or what, what standard of, of compliance will be required against Cat 2? Uh, look, there's two things. Firstly, in terms of auditors, yes, we've got a number of auditors um, who are experienced and qualified. Just talk to the sailing office and they can line that up. Uh, look, the other thing is, um, for the rates, we have no discretion. We have to comply by the letter of every requirement. Uh, for the rally, if a boat says, look, you know, I haven't got a trisail, but I've got a furling mainsail, which I can do, well, that's probably, you know, if it was a race, they may, not, may or may not accept that. But because this is a rally, it's being run by the sailing club, um, we can consider what we call just alternative arrangements. So something else which we decide achieves the same end, um, even though it may do it in a slightly different way. So, um, yeah. So, so on that basis, is it possible to have a conversation with someone now around some of those requirements? Because for uh, my understanding, particularly around uh, uh, furling head sails, is storm jib is difficult if you don't have an inner force day. So uh, there are potential solutions around that, which I'd be keen to discuss now rather than when the boat is fully ready for audit. Yeah, look, the, um, that question has come up actually from another boat and um, uh, look, there are options to be able to set a storm jib in a separate sail. Um, you can get something which wraps around a furling sure. headsail and you can set something up with a, uh, on a separate halyard. Um, but yes, no, by all means, look, uh, the, the way the, the CAT 2 thing should work is that it's up to the skipper to do a self-audit and the audit forms are available and you can go through that and then then if you've got questions, then you ask an auditor or you can come back to the Bali committee and say, okay, help me understand this or I've got something else, I want to do something different. Uh, but absolutely, let's uh, talk early, that's the yeah, key thing. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Bill. Um, could I just ask the, all of the uh, respective crew
crew in the room. Stand up. We're fortunate we've got quite a few here today. Um, lots and lots of them. Uh, not you, Igor, sit down. So all those people have put their name down there. So we've got a big spread of uh, experience. And there's a doctor out there somewhere as well. So it's crew like mine, you need a doctor. That we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if um, if you any of the skippers, if they go through the sailing office, um, Christina will, will put you in contact with with the respective crew. She's also got the regional aids for each one, I guess. Um, does Ben wrong? Would you like to come and say a few words? Oh, I was going to sit here. Oh, you can sit. Commodore's privilege. Thank you, Michael. This one, this one works better. Um, in regard to the uh, fifth race or in regard to containers? Fifth race. Or both? Right. Um, good evening, uh, members and guests. So uh, the committee thought it would be prudent to um, send a container to, um, to Bali for all those who are going to uh, go onward and uh, want to take some of their cruising gear. So um, thus, in a previous life, I said that quite regularly. I was uh, assigned the job. So <clears throat> what we've established is that um, a container can go into Benoa, no problem at all. Uh, in fact, uh, the container port is right next door to the new um, arena. And of course, uh, Blundo actually run it all anyway. So it's, uh, it's quite uh, convenient. So the bottom line is that um, it's going to cost uh, very close to $5,000 for a 20-foot container. Um, that's from door to door. So um, what we envisage doing is get a uh, expressions of interest of how much uh, in square meterage you'd like to send. Um, and then, of course, uh, what you plan sending. For example, outboards or dinghies or barbecues. Barbecues, beauty. Um, so uh, it would be open to uh, all and sundry. Um, but ideally, we'd like to have an expression of interest fairly early with an estimation of how much uh, square metres you have, um, cubic metres, I should say, um, so that it gives us some idea of whether we need one container, two containers, or three. But um, so it's envisaged what will happen is well, the container will be dropped down here. Um, I don't mind overseeing the packing of it all, but of course, you would have to make sure some of your more damageable goods are wrapped in either bubble wrap and or uh, boxes and so forth. Yeah, things like dinghies, of course, are no problem at all. We'll just uh, slide them in. So um, the big thing at this stage is getting some idea of actually the volumes we do need. Um, as far as, and then the other little thing we need to do, <coughs> our good mate Raymond from, uh, from Bali <coughs> has indicated that we need to do a test run on the actual manifest. Um, as we're all aware, the Balinese can be a little bit finicky um, about what comes in as far as imports go. But we've been assured that uh, provided it's of a nautical nature, in other words, you're not sending wine or porno videos for your onward uh, trips, um, there will be no problem at all. So, um, so some indication of the cubic metres and what you'd like to send would be ideal. And we'll take it from there. So what will happen is the container gets packed here, um, there's a weekly service now to Benoa. Uh, we envisage uh, just to make sure, to be sure, to be sure, we'd send it an extra week early. So it may in fact sit up in, uh, in the container port for a, a week or so. Um, but then we'd uh, bring it down, unload it all, and you come and get your bits and pieces. Um, there was talk of doing a return trip. That's a little bit more tricky, um, coming back into Australia. To be truthful, I haven't followed it through um, too far because I've assumed that most of you, being the cruising types, will just uh, keep your gear on board and the racing types also will just keep the gear on board and uh, continue back to Australia and or onward. So um, that's it in a nutshell. So as soon as you uh, have some indication of what you'd like to sell, and, and so, um, as I said, uh, better sooner than later, we can uh, get some idea of, and do the dots, uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Right, that's the container thing done. Um, as uh, we've indicated in the past, there is a five race series, which the Bali race is uh, part of. And I uh, had the uh, pleasure of meeting uh, Lucille Panting last week. She's a Commodore Darwin Yacht Club. 
And um, she was at pains to try and explain that the fifth race now would be this um, uh, summer lake. Yacht race, like super lake? Summer, summer lake. That's the, um, that's the uh, I have a notice of race here also for those who want to have a quick read through it. Um, and I can get you a, a, a copy electronically. Um, this, according to Lucille, is um, their preferred event. Um, they are keen. It's some 300 miles due north of, um, of Darwin, which means you sort of reach there and reach home, which is um, the uh, pre preferred way to go, rather than sort of bashing back when you do the dillies and ambons. So um, they are very keen to um, promote this race. Uh, it's, it ran for 11 years uh, some time ago, and then there was a hiatus of number four or five years, and then they've just started doing it um, again now. This will be the fourth time they've run this race, and it's got bigger and bigger and more popular as it goes along. And um, when you see the, um, the islands themselves, and I must confess that I haven't been anywhere near the place, but um, from the seals, uh, and I've got a couple of slides which I'll slow show later, um, <clears throat> this group, which they call the Forgotten Islands, is... Um, Apparently, absolute uh, postcard stuff. This is uh, very few places. Well, that she assures me, none other in Bali anyway are, are better than this. Uh, quite primitive. It's uh, all Christian, by the way, so um, there's not the same negativity for you drunken yachties that turn up down on a drink beer and party all night. Talk to yourself. <laughs> so it won't suit the good ship giddy up. <laughs> um, so. Um, as I said, uh, if anyone would like to know more about it, then uh, you can uh, see me and I'll be happy to email the uh, notice of race. Um, it, it is the last one. It starts on the 26th of September. So it's getting a little bit late in the season. That's the only thing that would um, concern me a little bit. But um, depending on what your movements are, if you're going on from there or uh, coming back to Australia, um, that may be a little bit of a problem. But other than that, I. And as you will see, do we have some slide? No, Christina? No, no, that's all I've got. That's all you've got? What about my little uh, stick thing? Oh, stick is up there. Oh, sorry. I, so I did sit in the wrong seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Christina, thank you very much. If you just like to... Is yours the black one? It is indeed. And if you just... Uh, as I said, I had a big flick through these, and it was um, some very impressive stuff. Uh, And apparently this is just the sort of around the main island rather than the, uh, the, the other groups of islands around further. So um, it's uh, quite uh, traditional. Um, there, there is no tourists there. It's a fact of life. So traditional cruising grounds. Um, I don't... There is apparently hotels, or well, a hotel, and uh, some restaurants and bits and pieces there. But certainly... Um, it is a lot like uh, when you get up to the, the Bellaton and you go up the archipelago further. That's a bit more like this sort of stuff here. So that's the main town itself. Um, so as I said, it's uh, I think there's 14 churches, so they're uh, God-fearing people. <coughs> um, and it's, uh, yeah, as I said, as you can see there, it's absolutely pristine. That's uh, the seal's little vessel. So... Um, if uh, any of you would like to, as I said, have more information about that, it's... Ah, and we will stick a link on the website. There you go. That's from the boss. For the whole series, that is, yes. Because uh, I think you get to drop one. Is that part of the deal or not? Yeah, drop one. Yeah, so... double points or triple points. That's right. It's double or triple points for the barley race. And then, of course, the Ambon Dilly and now this um, Sumalaki will uh, give you some more points. Um... So that's it, and this someone's got a question uh, about that side of it. As I said, I've never been there, so I really can't. Although I had, had an offer to go up there in October uh, next year. Oh, this, oh no, hang on, November this year. That's now, it's gone. Too late, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there you go. So, uh, but I think uh, worth considering, as I said, it, it's closer. It's a 300 mile uh, dash, um, and apparently just due north, so it's a doddle. That's what they all say. <laughs> yeah. So the Ermagood, uh, 
feeling a bit priced. Uh, Mr. Busham, I'd like to come up. Um, Tony, one of our, one of our uh, sponsors, uh, he donated this uh, very flash barbecue down here, which is about a thousand worth, and it was for people that nominated early. Um, so we've got all the names in the hat here, and you got for every two hundred and fifty dollars you, you got one entry. So somebody did four entries. I'm not sure who that is. But. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I should hold it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the rally is going to immediately follow. The rally is going to immediately follow um, the, uh, the race and the rally. Um, this is the round barley rally and uh, all boats are welcome to get up there. So, in a, in a nutshell, what, what, what about the, uh, the pointer? Which one? Look at that. Technology. <laughs> um, we're, we're going to uh, leave from Banoa. Um, there's the option to stay at the Bongan, across to Gili Gede, up to Madana Bay, to Gili Air, across to Umbat up to Lavina, Weedang Bay, and, uh, and then finish it there. So what, what I'm going to do is uh, go through these in a bit more detail. Um, the itinerary, first of all, is that on Saturday, May 23rd, will be the official function and the presentations. Uh, on Sunday, you know, a bit of a break and get ready. Um, now, what I understand is with the, and Bill, with the agreement that we formed, we don't have to clear customs from, uh, from Bali. That's the theory, yeah. That's the theory, okay. Um, because the, the point here is that if you're going to go all the way across to Gili Gede, you need a full day to do it. Um, so the, whoops, sorry. So, the, the, the theory is that we'll leave on either Sunday the 24th, if you would prefer to, and go across to the Bongan, or go leave and do the whole trip to Gili Gili. Um, and it'll go through and finish at uh, Bunyawitan Bay. Now, what, what I've got is uh, the way this quick presentation is going to go, is that there's a, uh, first of all, which I'm asked of this, there's first of all uh, which, which the area is we're sailing and then a bit on the information there. Um, so first of all, the Lombongan uh, stay, it's, it's about 12 miles across from Banoa to Lombonga. Um But don't be fooled, uh, the, you get very, very strong currents coming down through those straits. And uh, it can get rough. Um, and I was reading something today that said that the flow of water from the north of the Bali through the Lombok Straits can be 
between two and four million cubic meters per second, which is pretty mind-boggling. Um, but, uh, and also there's some pretty rapidly varying shelves in there. So it does get rough. Um, so you just need to uh, be aware of that. And, uh, you know, I know with our boat, when we've been going across there, we've been doing two and three knots consistently, trying to make headway uh, getting through. So leave plenty of time. Um, in and out of Banoa, it, it can be uh, some big swells going in and out of there at times. Um, so what, and w once you're there, um, and this is uh, Labongan Harbour, um, that it's a massive tourist destination. If you, I don't know if you guys have been across there, but everybody who goes to Bali goes across to Labongan, and uh, so there's boats and people everywhere. Um, and it, it's also uh, can be a little bit difficult to get onto the shore there. So just um, you know, th think about your decision making with regard to it. A lot of people love it. I don't know if, if what people have been here while they think of Labongan, but uh, that's an option. But, but the next stretch then is the Labongan Gili Gede. Um, it, it's. Uh, You've gone too, too fast. Thanks. Um, so, once, a, oh, shit. <laughs> once again, um, we've got the. Uh, the, 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 the thank you. I want a point. <laughs> we, we, we've got the uh, across the Labongan, and then it, it is better when you get across from Labongan going over to uh, Geligede, but you still do get strong currents coming through. Um, when you're going in, this is uh, Geligede here. Um, when you're coming in around this passage, coming into it, the, there's lots and lots of fish farms, so you have to watch out for them. And uh, if you leave it a bit late and you're coming in there, you can be. Um, you can have a bit of a problem seeing them. Um, <coughs> this is the new marina, or so they tell me. Um, and uh, if you are going to book in, make sure you do your bookings early, um, or you can pick up a mooring or, or anchor there. Uh, and it's really, really beautiful. Uh, we had some nice times there, Mikey. It was uh, really nice. Um, the, the, the plan is to have two nights there. On Monday, 25th and the 26th, first night at the marina and second night to be uh, organised after that. Okay, so from Gili Gede up to Sengigi. Um, Sengigi is a, a tourist destination, but uh, it's more relaxed. It's a bit more resorty uh, up there. It's quite an easy trip. Um, there is a, a rock to watch out for just to the east of Gili Gede, which we found last time, um, and uh, um, when, when it's an easy trip up there. There is still a southerly setting current, but uh, you're close to the coast and it's not bad getting up there. So um, when you come into the bay here, there's reef in this part and reef around that part. So you can see some of the reef up here, that's the, that's the bay up there. You just gotta, it, it, it's easy to get into, you just gotta uh, follow your charts. Um, and uh, um, it can be swelly, it's a bit deep, deep but it's a pretty nice place. Uh, lots of restaurants and bars on the beach and uh, in the township. Um, so Robbie, you, 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 can you just elaborate a little bit on what's organised here for the formality? Or they could come here. 
I also, on behalf of ourselves and Mr Giles, invited them to dinner and a sail on board our, our yachts at some stage. I forgot to tell you that, but I did send you a copy of the letter. Um, so we don't know yet. I sent a test email yesterday to the two email addresses he gave us, and they both bounced both back. So uh, we've got um, Eva looking to find the right um, address. They were the email addresses on his card. Um, and so that's that. And then there's several resorts. And we went to one right down on that point last time, which was just delightful, wasn't it? They did a fabulous, there were like 25 or 30 of us, and they did a fantastic night for us. So that would be those two nights. Thanks, Robin. And that's we'll fun. let you know once we hear back from the governor. Thank you. Um, so then from St Higgy up to Madonna Bay, um, it's actually an Englishman who's worked here in Perth who owns that place called Peter... Cranfield. Cranfield, yeah, thanks. Um, it, it's really lovely. Um, there is a... Uh, um, it, it's a little bit rolly in the anchorage, but still really nice. Um, and there's a, a really crappy little uh, dock there. I wouldn't advise using it. Um, just uh, just um, anchor off for pick up a mooring. Um, there's a little bar and restaurant in there and uh, some quite reasonable accommodation. Um, and uh, it's, it's great. And so dinner will be organised for that night. Phil, just for a second. Yeah. yeah Madonna Bay does have a lift-out facility. It does have a lift-out facility, yeah. That's right. Thanks. Thanks. Louise, it's great. Um, so then from Madonna Bay all the way back to Gilead, which is about five miles, um, and uh, it's really terrific again. Um, it's the three Gilly Islands there, um, and uh, it's a popular tourist resort. You can walk around the islands. Um, you can see this is the anchorage type area, um, and same anchorage here. It, it looks a little bit scary when you're looking at it to come in because the reefs sort of close in but you, it's not you can get in there no problems um, and uh, it's famous for its sunsets with its low tides <laughs> um, and uh, you can pick up a mooring for a fee a little man or a guy will come out on his boat and say uh, you know we want 10 bucks or whatever it is and, and that's part of the deal um, or you can you know just drop your pick there So we're going to spend a couple of nights at Gilly Air. It's really lovely. There's, there's bars everywhere there. It's really great. And then uh, across to Umbuck Bay <coughs> on Bali. Um, um, Umbuck Bay is quite, it's quite different. It's um, volcanic soil, volcanic rock, um, and it's um, very deep water. And, and you have to pull up within, apparently, it feels like a few metres up the, of the beach. Um, and it's swelly. So, but all that are solid, um, the number of bars and restaurants along it is great. It's got a very famous dive spot, and they'll play loud music all night. So you get that's something to look forward to. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is meet on the beach, uh, and enjoy, find a restaurant, have a few drinks, it'll be terrific. Um, from Umba around to Lavina. I dare say quite a few of you guys have been to Lavina on the north of Bali. Um, it's a, another tourist destination. It, it is a fun town and there's once again lots of bars and restaurants and resorts and things there. Um, and uh, it's just, there's nothing difficult about it. You just sail in, drop the pick and um, go to the beach and drink g and -Ts. From Lavina to the highlight, in, in my opinion, Gunyawidong Bay. Um, this, this place, uh, has anybody been there to Widong Bay? It's really magnificent, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah really magnificent. Um, there are about four resorts in this bay. You're going through a narrow entrance, and then it just enlarges out, and uh, it's totally protected. Um, and uh, a, a truly enjoyable place to be. So after, uh, that, that's the end of the rally. Um, after uh, Bidang, uh, Banya Widang, just go your own way, wherever, you, wherever you're planning to go, east, west, north. 
Um, and just to note that uh, going back, going back here to, um, if you go around the top of Bali and down to Banyabiru, um, this is a beautiful anchorage on the way back to Banoa. It's not part of the rally, but it's beautiful. There's masses of, of fish uh, traps, and you've got to go right into the shore to find that anchorage. Um, it's a beautiful national park. Yeah. Totally unspoiled. <laughs> this is a bit of a surprise through here. The currents are ferocious, um, so you reckon they're bad here. We, Robbie and I were smart enough to go the wrong way <laughs> against them trying to go up there. And we were doing, with Condilli, one knot over the ground. Um, when you just, when we were hugging the coast, but just further out, there were standing waves, I reckon they were three metres high. Um, so ju just, um, but coming down this way, it'll, it'll be dead easy. You know. But going back that way, it ain't so smart. Um, but anyway, that, that's just something else of interest, you know. All the ferries cross here, and they're, they're going there and pointing here, sort of thing, you know, as they make their way across there. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Uh, it was just Robbie's thing about clearing customs. Uh, <coughs> the rally, or the, the round, you know, the Robbie and Phil expedition is uh, completed. You want to go back to Tanawa and clear from there. Uh, that's that's the uh, the plan at this stage. Uh, or they can go across yeah, to the arena. And with clearing too, if you what's been happening past is we've often uh, a lot of the boats last time were cleared in Benoa and then wandered through Indonesia. And as long as you don't stay anywhere for too long, um, that doesn't seem to be a problem. And with the, the change to the cage system, they, they're sort of encouraging us to do it. Um, and you can anchor for a night. Uh, we stayed a couple of nights in a major port, and uh, yeah, we still didn't go to jail, so. Um, but most boats do it, just be clear of like Benoa if you if you party. I mean, we, we cleared Benoa and, and joined a bit of the rally and then continued on to Darwin. So you've got plenty of options. Sorry, so you, you're suggesting clear Banoa before the rally? Yeah, oh, well, no, we, we only did a couple of, couple of the, yeah. the uh, couple of the stops with the rally. Uh, so we're, it's pretty much on our way to, to Darwin, so we just continued on. Yeah. So you, there's lots of options. Um, you're better off to if you're doing the, the rally to actually clear, and there's other ports that we can clear from through Indonesia, but because we'll have support, um, and Terry will help capture that in a minute, but because we have support in um, Benoa, it's it's much easier um, and like, less less risk. I mean, there has been a few boats, a few years ago there was a boat, um, Steel Debris, and they, they stayed there for two or three weeks afterwards, and cost them a fortune to leave because they didn't have any support. Uh, there was a little bit of graft and corruption there. But generally it's, it's, it's pretty right. So if you, if you, it's just about planning it and as we get close to the event and we talk amongst ourselves, we'll, we'll have a, a bit better idea of you know, what you're doing. But you do have a plan um, to, to join this rally for a little bit and continue on. You probably would clear in the night. So, um, Robbie, so they, they, cleared, they left the boat here and, and cleared for Benoa. And there's lots of people who left the boat there for a fair while, two or three or four months. Now we've got uh, Pastor Little Terry. Um, he's done a lot of cruising through the meeting with his probably wife there, which is, just seems to happen. I have been there four times. Yeah. Um, Terry's going to give a, a bit of talk, 15 minutes or so, on uh, what they've done and some suggestions. Yeah, lots of nice photos. Yeah, so uh, I'm mindful that a lot of people in the room, is, some people ask for in-depth, and other people this will not apply. So it's just a bit of a gallop from what you could do beyond Beyond Bali as to where you might do or what you might see. So there's a little bit of technology at the front here, so if it doesn't work, I'll just flip past it, but let's see this one. Yeah, 
this was a yes to the last Bali. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how guys race. You get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. Let's see if I can get past that. Technology always, always works here, or not. Okay. Now, this is the uh, actual start of Bali in 2011, and this was taken for sure. Now, this is the rally fleet starting. We started on the Friday, and the race started on the Sunday or Monday? Sunday. So, two or three days later. Uh, I'll just fast forward to about minute 20 if I can, if I can do that. Okay, the bit I was going to show in there is the rally fleet going across the start line. It was rally, it wasn't a race, it was about 15 boats, all within about two minutes of each other, having a rally. Uh, so anyway, you go, you're off on your way to Bali, uh, you do a bit of navigating, you do a bit of singing, uh, do a bit of laundry. Okay. Make some bread, do a bit of maintenance, catch a fish. Have a big party in Bali, and then what do you do beyond Bali? And as we said, uh, you've got some fundamental decisions. There's a bit of information here. One choice is to come straight back to Fremantle, and if you do that, and some people will because of work, uh, that's going to be 3,000 miles of sailing in about five or six weeks, because two weeks up there, or ten days up there, a party, two weeks back, plus weather. Uh, so you've got to allow five or six weeks. So if you want to do a lot of blue water sailing, that's your choice. But the reality is, once you get up there, you've done the hard yards, there's a lot of things you can do. And as we saw before, you can go across to Darwin. There's about four or five different rallies coming out of Darwin. So am one. So, 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 Dili, so, so, uh, so to Indonesia, coming out of Cairns. Uh, the challenge of those noise, I went up and we flew into Lombok. We had two weeks up in Lombok to look at, uh, once we got there, waiting for these rallies to come past. We had a choice, we could either sail to Darwin, which a lot of people have done, that's about 600 miles, 600 miles, and if you sail across the top of the island, you keep out of the southeast straits. We did it in uh, 2011, we tried to go to Darwin from Kupang, and we had 400 miles of 25 knots on the nose, and we ripped our uh, stays out of the deck, and had to divert. Uh, so the, the next time, there were a few other people did it in 2015, 13, they sailed around the top of Dili, and got a bunch of better sailing and uh, so you're going 600 miles to come back 600 miles, and that didn't really suit us. So we looked at the options of leaving our boat in either Bali or in Lombok, and that's why we looked at the new marina. We had two weeks up there, lovely resort. Uh, the challenge there, of course, is that uh, from Lombok to the marina in Lombok is about an hour, hour and a half from the airport. We can do a direct flight there. Uh, so we, we, we looked at leaving there and then picking up the rally as we went past in September, October. But the problem there, it's very late in the season. And if you go up into Bali, uh, down the bottom here is the, um, the, where is it, the cyclone season, cyclone season. You've got to be out of there by about October. So if you either go up there and you get about a two or three month window before you can come back. So in 2011, we did a month of Indonesia, a month, and sorry, people taking, I can share all these slides if you, and all the detail. There's a lot of detail here that I can't share tonight. Uh, so in 2011, we did a month of Bali, a month of, of the Kimberley, and came back. We got down here uh, in the middle of winter. Uh, the, the traditional thing for coming down the West Coast is to come down before September. Uh, August is better. We've had good runs, we've had bad runs. Certainly, you don't want to be out of the north before the cyclone season starts. So your choices are either do that little bit, and the people going overseas are a passport voyage to have. Uh, to go on that journey and not to take the opportunity, it's a bit, a bit of madness unless you've got some pressing commitments. Take a month or two off. It's probably your first and last time you're going to do an international passport voyage out of Australia, because there aren't too many, unlike the, the Brits, can go across the channel. Uh, you take the opportunity and do a, a bit of a look around. 
Now, what, what can you do once you get up there? So you can go right, and we're going to Andrew to talk about that in a minute. Uh, you can go north, which Bill did last time, go and look at the orangutans. And Louise and I are going to do this time, but then you can also go left and go and literally cruise up to uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, sorry, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. Uh, so you've got cyclone season, and so yeah, you either come back in the same year or you stay for a, a full season, which means you're basically into about a year or, or more commitment. And as we say, we did a, uh, Louise and I, we, we've, done, uh, we, we've done about three recce. Uh, we did a trip around Lavina, Daniel Wangi, all that sort of stuff, on the east coast, Lavina Beach. Uh, we went up to Lombok, and then in September, August, we went to Thailand, Malaysia, looked at all the places up there. And again, if that's of interest to you, I can share you the exact details later. It's, we won't try and leave you too much today. So, in Indonesia, 14,752 according to Wiki. Uh, if you do one a day, it takes you 40 years plus to do the whole of Indonesia, so you've got an awful lot to do. Uh, there are only about five marinas, long to point at the top here. There's a, a, bit, a few choices in uh, uh, Jakarta, and there's two or three around Bali, uh, not, which we just saw from Phil, and that's it. Lots and lots of anchorages, uh, lots and lots of lovely art bits and pieces. Uh, coming back to Australia, you've got the southeast uh, trades or the monsoons. So the further, if you're coming back, the further east you get, the better you're sailing and you want to go to Darwin or back down to Broome. You can only clear into Broome or Darwin as in terms of north part of Australia for customs and immigration. And then you can go, as you say, either east, north, or northwest. Uh, there is great provisioning in Bali, in Malaysia, all those places, Tesco's, anything you can buy in Australia you can buy there. Usually that same price, wine, beer, uh, and some places even cheaper. But once you get out of the major centres, absolutely nothing. You've got to be fairly sufficient both in uh, food, uh, particularly grog. You won't find grog and no ATMs and not much Western food. Uh, Andrew, you want to come up, sir? Andrew's going to take himself out to the right. Now, what we want to encourage people to do, if this whets your appetite, grab hold of Andrew and me and we can form up a two or three different... Uh, Boats, uh, we've done big rallies, we've done small rallies. You're right there. There you go. And Andrew's going out to the right and going to share where he's going to go without taking too long. Cool, thanks, thanks everybody. So, my name's Andrew Mathert, my partner is Donna Watson, and we sail on Sandal, so Bavaria 40. Uh, we're doing the, doing the rally this time around. But I was fortunate enough in 2011 uh, to do the rally also, and that was my first and only international sailing and just absolutely loved it. Can't commend it high enough to anybody. This is just living the dream, which is why I'm back again. And this time we're going not for a couple of months, we're going for hopefully a couple of years. So um, what I thought I'd do is just share with you a p potential cruise that we did east from Bali. And I'll give you a little bit of ideas about what we're going to do this time. And if anyone's got similar ideas, I'm really happy to um, talk about how we might better join up together. So. Um, there's, um, there's Bali. So we cruised east along the north side of these islands. So Sumbawa, Komodo, Flores. We came down to Kupang, cleared out of Kupang, went to Roti, came back by Ashmore Reef and re-entered Australia in Dampier. And that was about two months from Bali back to Dampier. So just order of magnitude. And we felt like we were going pretty fast. In actual fact, our limitation was we didn't have Australian ships registration. And from recollection, I can't think we had three months or something like that before we had to be back. So this time, we're actually going to get Australian ships registration so we can stay out a lot longer. We felt that was really rushed. So um, coming across here, I'll show you a couple of images just to share with you how beautiful this amazing place is. But just to get your bearings, that's Lombok. So Gili Air is at the north of Lombok. We've seen some photos, images from um, Phil and Robbie already on that. Uh, you come across Sumbawa, there's actually a big harbour here called Bima. We had some of our crew fly out from Bima. So all of these islands have got airports. So if you're getting crew coming and going, pretty much from Bali, you can fly into most of these major islands. So there's a, um, an airport at Bima here. Um, on the edge of, um, on the very western edge of Flores, which is the uh, place called Labuan Bajo, and that's the stepping off point to the Komodo group of islands. And again, another town where you can buy a lot of stuff, you can fly in and out of there very easily. Um, you go across the north of Flores, 
Uh, just here, there's a, there's a big airport called um, Lua, Lua Liba. Uh, again, another place you can resupply relatively easily. So we found that we could probably resupply pretty effectively about every seven days. And we don't carry a lot of water. I'm going back with the desalinator this time, but water was our biggest limitation. And there's no wind, so we were burning a fair bit of diesel as well, um, getting along there. So you need to think about where are the places you can resupply. But along here, it's really pretty comfortable. And depending on how long you've got, you know, you can duck south from here to Sumba, come home. You can come along to Flores, come home. Or as um, Terry's already said, you can go further out the top of Timor and come home from there. So you've got a number of options depending upon how much time you might have. Uh, Kupang, um, also a, 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 big, a, a big port, lots of facilities there, easy to come home. We got approached by two people in 2011 um, wanting us to bring people back to Australia. <laughs> so that's a, a very real thing up there. Um, and Roti, uh, we went to afterwards. So just a couple of images to give you a bit of a look at this. This is um, Gilly Air. So lots of people have been to Gilly Air, pretty popular these days. People are flying for holidays there. Uh, great anchorage, great bars. As soon as you go further east from Lombok, it just keeps getting better and better. The further you go, uh, the wilder it gets, the friendlier it gets, and the more beautiful it gets. So this is an island called Pulamadang. Uh, we shared an anchorage here with Susi, and on the beach, we bought some fish from a, a local fisherman, cooked it up on the beach with a barbecue, singing songs, with guitars. It doesn't really get much better. We also played um, volleyball against the girls' uh, volleyball team after school uh, at one of the uh, one of the, the only village there, and, and we lost. So they really, the, the locals are super, super friendly. Uh, this is the port of Bima. Uh, these are squid fishing boats, amazing boats. Uh, at night, you, these are full of lights, so uh, you see them everywhere. But lots of uh, friendly kids. Everywhere you go, there are kids that come out in dugouts. And, and look, it's, it's cynical to think they're looking for some free stuff. They probably are, but actually they're really happy just to spend time with you, chatting and hanging about, even if you haven't got stuff for them. Um, further along uh, Sumbawa, so this is on Sumbawa now, uh, we, we used um, the 101 Anchorages book that was pictured up here before, and it was pretty good. It didn't have a lot of anchorages, but the anchorages it had were really great. And um, this is one that we're going along called Wera Bay. And it happened to say, oh, look, in Wera Bay they build boats. So, no, we'll, we'll go and have a look. And there was this big open area of water in front of the village uh, where there were no boats, uh, no boats more. And we had the, the customs official come out in his iron uniform in a little dugout. Um, we thought, okay, well, he just wants a bit of, you know, bit of gazoza, a bit of uh, soft drink. And he said, no, you can't stay here. Yeah, I know we can't stay here. Here's a, here's a soft drink. No, no, you really can't stay here. We're about to launch a boat. So these two boats here, um, we went, and you can see there's a whole bunch of people here, all in the shade. And we went over there, and they're all pushing and shoving and heaving and hauling. And I didn't know how long it would take, but um, well, we'll just go for a bit of a walk. And just as we're about to go for a walk, off it went. So there was this probably 90-foot boat launched right there in front of us. And that's a view over the, over the little village. So that's fairly typical of the villages on Sumbawa. And as I said, the further east you go, the more wild and sort of smaller and more local the villages become. Um, so from Zimbabwe, the, the next group of islands is the Komodo group of islands that sit between Zimbabwe and Flores. Um, this is an old caldera, so all the islands are volcanic, and this is an old uh, volcanic rim, so you can sort of see it sort of comes around a big circle, so really very, very deep in the middle, uh, but beautiful visuals. Uh, that's an that's a, a active volcano, volcano called Sangiang, we didn't stop there, unfortunately. We zoomed past, but I won't be stopping. I won't be missing it again. Apparently, you can go into the middle, and there's a lake you can swim in in the middle of the island. So we'll definitely be looking at that next time. Um, this is probably the first island of um, the Komodo group itself. It's, I think it's called Lua Lembata. I sort of forget all the all the Gili Lua or something like that. I can certainly talk to you guys more about the details if you want to look at it. But um, amazing visuals. That's looking south through the Komodo Straits. Uh, and once you get in there, that's a, um, called Tela Ingo. Uh, it's an anchorage in, in, um, uh, on the line called Rinka, which is in the middle of the Komodo group. And um, beautiful anchorages. We found that the anchorages are very steep because they're volcanic. Um, they, they drop off very quickly. So getting an anchor to stick there can be a bit difficult, but you do get better at that. Um, and here, um, the, the Komodo dragons are not just on Komodo Island. They're on about four of the islands. And, um, they're actually not hard to find. <laughs> they, um, they're often wandering along the beaches. Um, 
looking out at you with spittle dripping out, dripping out of them, your mouth, wondering whether you'd be better eating than the deers. But we actually saw this one chasing a deer down the beach, uh, trying to catch it for dinner. So there are a lot of them there. Um, further, further east um, is Flores, and uh, Flores, it just gets more and more beautiful. This is a little island off the north, north coast of Flores. We went through to a walk. Um, again, the little kids coming out in the dugouts every time you stop, wanting to come and have a chat. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, who is, um, Jeff Chambers, who is actually an Australian representative canoeist, has represented Australia, tried actually paddling one of these dugout canoes, and the kids make it look very easy. Uh, in actual fact, he really struggled. So, they're, and, they're, and they're always leaking, so they've always got the little kid in the middle here who's got the bail. So he's the one who's bailing all the way out and back. Um, uh, Flores is largely Christian, uh, so lots of Christian churches there. And when you come to the beaches, you know, this is the reception you get. Um, they don't get a lot of visitors over here. This is still pretty mainstream. If you look at that map I showed you before, this is not a, a long, remote area. This is not hard to get to, but even now, you know, people are so happy to see you. They surf you on the beach. You know, they just want to have a chat, really. Um, and lots of them, this is in a, a little bit further along, a place called the Rion and um, is really traditional lives when you get into these villages. Um, they're very happy to sell you a coconut, um, sell you a bit of fresh veggies if they've got some. Uh, this, this is again the Rion Conservation Area. Highly, highly recommend this. This was truly beautiful um, in, in Rion. Um, another little anchorage coming towards now, towards the very eastern end of, uh, of Flores. Um, more canoeists. Just the sort of terrain we're, we're sailing through. <coughs> Uh, active volcano there, it's pretty cool. Lots of shells. So that's, that just gives you a, a quick visual picture of what that route looks like along the north side of the island, Kupang and home. So really briefly, what we're going to do this time is we're probably going to retrace our ste steps pretty much to around Komodo. Uh, we had the mayor of Wakatobi here a couple of years ago who did a really good cell job. And the Wakatobi Islands are actually a group of islands off the very southeastern corner of that Bhutan there is one of the Wakatobi Islands. So they're in this area here. So we're gonna go from Komodo, probably through these group of islands to Wakatobi. Um, we ultimately wanna to go to Rajar Ampat, which is up here off West Papua. And Rajar Ampat is known as the, the, has the highest biodiversity of coral anywhere in the world. Um, very little infrastructure. The only way people go there for holidays is on liveaboard boats. It's a couple of very basic resorts, but not much else. So we, we will probably head up along the Sulawesi coast. There's, there's the Togi and Islands in here are supposed to be very good. So we, we may shoot across the Banda Islands into here. Sarong is, is the local port town, so you can fly to Sarong. Uh, we may come across these islands here. We're not too sure yet, but um, from um, from here, we'll come home by Triton Bay. It really interesting to hear about Solaki. We might even try and pop onto the back end of that rally to come back into Darwin, because we're going to bring the boat back to Darwin for the end of September and uh, leave it there when it gets too hot. So just a couple of, couple of images. If you haven't seen the images of what Raja Ampat looks like, um, I've not been there, but there's a lot of media about it currently. You've probably seen the, the latest Club Marine uh, magazine. They had a brilliant article about it, but you're seeing it everywhere. It's really flavour of the month, and this is the sort of scenery you're seeing, and, the, um, the sort of fish life we're going to experience up there. So that's what we're doing. Um, I'm really happy to and really keen to engage with anybody else that wants to head off to the northeast. Um, I don't have all the ideas um, or, the, or the answers, but uh, what I do know is, is cruising through East Indonesia is living the dream. So if you can make any time, just do it. Thanks, Andrew. Right. Just going to flip across to uh, what else you might want to get to. We've read the appetite. I'll just find the. Uh, uh, the good news. Hang on. Good news is a lot of this work's already done. There's lots of uh, good de uh, detail out there. This is what Robbie and Phil were talking about before. Uh, this is their notes. Uh, as I say, there's lots and lots of rallies coming out of Darwin. Uh, that's the Gillies. That's the Gillies. Uh, they've got a nice swimming pool there. We had a few days there. Very nice. 
Um, the oysters went in there in a couple early this year. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, we're going to pick up the uh, cruise around Bali, and then we're going to come up through uh, Surabaya, across the orangutans, through here, through here, and then up to uh, Nongsha Point, uh, and then leave the boat there for three months, and then pick up the sail of Indonesia. Uh, sorry, sail of Malaysia, coming up uh, the west coast of Malaysia. This is all day sailing. A lot of yachts just get stuck in Pangu, it's very, very highly recommended. Uh, and I'm up to Langkawi. Uh, and then we're going to go uh, sail Thailand in mid January. Uh, now, from Langkawi, which is here, to Phuket, they take three, uh, sorry, a month, 30 days to do 100 miles. <laughs> so that's about, uh, about three miles a day. Yes. Yeah. They call it the slow cruise. Uh, the short, short and sweet rally. So it's all day sailing. It, it's 10 miles, 20 miles, 15 miles. And just meander around here. It's up to, and this is all the uh, PV Islands, the James Bond Island, that sort of stuff. Uh, now, the people that are thinking of doing this, I've got a bucket load of information. We did a uh, recce. We did look at about 12 or 15 marinas for leaving our boat up this way. I'm just going to flip through very quickly. I'm not going to talk about it too much because we've run out of time. Uh, but... Uh, we looked at uh, we've got, uh, 11 places to park the boat, another dozen places to have the boat refitted. And in terms of, broadly speaking, you start with Lankawi, as you go further north and left, it gets more and more expensive. And up the top is the Royal Phuket Marina. Uh, you can't get in there, it's full of uh, super yachts, uh, there's no space. But the one next door, the, Royal, uh, the Phuket Boat Lagoon, is about 115% more expensive than Fremantle. So, so about 25, 30 grand a year to park your boat there. And then you come down to the other end, uh, Langkawi and uh, Reback, a little while on the side here, that on par with Fremantle. So increasingly, the, this is all run by Australian, the Australian Mafia, uh, and uh, all super yachts, super expensive, super nice, uh, all apartments and, and high rise. And then there's everything in between. And just some images there, so that's the Royal Phuket. As I say, not a yacht in, in sight. Uh, Phuket boat lagoon, very nice, uh, nice accommodation. Uh, Yacht Haven, further up, a bit isolated, but uh, beautiful. Uh, Armpo, very nice, but resourceful. Again, uh, mostly uh, charter yachts. Uh, Port Tequila, brand new facility, cheap, but there's nothing there. Just a spinny bitty and, and a bar. <coughs> Crabby Town, absolutely shocking. Uh, Crabby boat lagoon, it's the sister to the uh, Phuket boat lagoon, very upmarket. We stayed in these little, and they can't see them, little pods. Can't see them, but uh, about 50 bucks a night, 60 bucks a night. Very nice, nice restaurant, and an absolutely incredibly good hard stand, absolutely world class hard stand. Uh, some great trades people there. Uh, so, turn, highly recommended. We went there, it's a fishing shack, uh, and the guy says, super cheap. And I said, what have you been? He said, well, I've been paying my boat, how long? 18 months so far. And, he, and they actually, they brought a fishing boat out while we were there and the girls came out of the office and they were scraping off the barnacles and the, mu the mussels and the oysters off the bottom and that was lunch. <laughs> and we said, oh, we don't want to spend 18 months of our life in this town. There isn't a bar, there's no beer, there's no, there's no hotels, they, was, they all live on the hard. Uh, Royal Land Cow Yacht Club, very nice. Uh, Port to Colour, a little bit, a little bit rough. Uh, a lot of long term, very long term yacht is there. And then Reback is very well supported by the Yachty community, but it drains down, you can't get out of the place for mosquitoes and, and, and monkeys. So that's a taste of what's there. References, a lot of blogs, bucket loads, I can share this. Uh, these people have actually, you can actually, they, they share all their waypoints, their, their routes. Uh, uh, pilot guides, the Southeast Asia Pilot Guide 6th edition just came out uh, two days ago, uh, so I've just ordered that. Uh, Cruising Guide to Indonesia, Andy Scott, which is the 2nd edition. 101 languages, as we said, very good. Absolutely fantastic, this one here. I've only just got it, but the Andy Scott book looks really good. Yeah. Uh, the 101 languages, we found lots of mistakes, but it's still good, it's better than nothing. Uh, and then the cruising guides, uh, and a couple of, but the blogs and the, uh, these people, you can actually download all of their uh, waypoints electronically, and then you load it up onto places like uh, uh, OpenCBN. So there's a lot of, uh, and, the, the thing there is there's no single point of absolute accuracy or, or truth in terms of navigating. You're taking from about 10 different sources and trying to work out the best what suits you. 
Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Um, that really does uh, sort of whet everybody's appetite, I guess, and that's, that's what the purpose of this evening was. Um, and with, with what Terry's got proposed, and um, Robbie and Phil have got, and what we've got, there's, there's plenty of options after the, after the event. So we encourage everybody to sort of join one of these groups, particularly the Phil and, Phil and uh, Robbie for the first bit, because it's, uh, it's uh, cruising in company and it's safe, and we, uh, they do know their way around, as does, does our meeting pa uh, past Commodore from three years ago. Four years. Four, 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 three moves. Four, three moves. <laughs> and thanks, well, that's all we're doing tonight. Um, just all of this information will go onto the website. Uh, Christine will, will uh, maybe edit a little bit of it, and, but there'll be every, all of, of, of the... Um, all of the information that will be there. And just ring us if you need something. Ring Christine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.